installing. We will use a pull to open installation as the example in this video. The gate operator is installed with the gate in its fully open position with the operator arm fully retracted. This position is the open limit. Conversely, on a push to open gate, the gate operator is installed on the gate in its closed position with the operator arm fully retracted. This position is the closed limit. For specific information on push to open installations, refer to the installation manual. The post bracket assembly's position determines the leverage of the opener as well as the clearance between the opener and the gate. Attach the post bracket to the gate post. The position of the post bracket must be in line and level with the point where the gate operator will be attached to the gate. Refer to the instruction manual for more detailed instruction. Using the 3 8 inch by 3 and 3 quarter inch bolt, loosely attach the post pivot bracket to the post bracket. Attach the gate bracket to the front mount of the operator arm. And attach the rear mount of the operator to the post pivot bracket using the clevis pin, bushing, and hairpin clip. With the operator arm level, temporarily clamp the gate bracket to the gate. Check to be sure that you have a minimum of 2 inches of clearance between the gate and the gate operator. You may need to adjust the pivot bracket to get the proper clearance. Next, remove the hairpin clip, clevis pin, and bushing from the front mount and the gate bracket and close the gate while supporting the opener. Never allow the opener to hang from the post bracket assembly. Visually align the opener with the gate bracket to see if there will be 2 inches of clearance when the gate is closed. Check to be sure that the distance between the mounting hole on the front mount of the retracted opener arm and the hole in the gate bracket is no more than 22 inches. If necessary, rotate the post pivot bracket to a position that will give the required clearance and stroke while still allowing one of the post pivot bracket holes to line up with a post bracket hole. When the optimum mounting position is finalized, permanently install the brackets using the hardware provided. Proper clearance, leverage, and stroke are critical to a trouble-free installation. With the gate in its closed position, install the stop plate on the end of the gate so it comes in contact with the gate post. Different types of gates will require different mounting hardware. Now return the gate to the open position and attach the operator arm to the secured brackets. The control box must be mounted at least 3 feet above the ground to protect it from rain splash and snow, and at least 3 feet away from an AC power source to prevent electrical interference. Remove the cover from the control box and mount box to a secure surface using screws provided or appropriate hardware. Temporarily mount the receiver as high as possible. Do not mount it to a metal post or metal surface. Refer to the installation manual for details. The dip switches on the control board allow you to customize how the system functions. Switches 1 and 2 are optional, where switches 3 and 4 must be set to match the specific gate application. Refer to the installation manual for details. Insert the opener power cable through the strain relief on the bottom of the control box. Attach stripped power cable wires into the terminals on the master opener terminal block. Sixteen gauge dual conductor stranded direct burial wire is required to connect the transformer or the solar panel to the control board. Wire coming up to the control box from the ground should be routed through PVC conduit to protect it from lawn mowers, weed eaters, or animals. Any outdoor outlets used must be enclosed in weatherproof housings. You must use either the AC transformer or solar panels to continually charge the system's battery, but never use both. Doing so will damage the system. Attach the transformer or solar wires to the control board terminals labeled 18 VAC or solar. Place the 12 volt battery into the control box and connect the battery wires from the control board to the battery terminals. Red wire to the positive terminal and black wire to the negative terminal. With the gate in the open position and the arm attached, turn the control box power switch to on. Press the transmitter button to close the gate. Then press the transmitter button again when the gate reaches the desired closed position. Repeat the process if necessary. When the gate is in the desired closed position, press and hold the Learn Master Limit button on the control board for 5 seconds, then release the button. 
Now press the transmitter button and allow the gate to return to its fully open position. The closed position is now programmed. Press the transmitter button again and allow the gate to close to verify that it stops at the desired position. Repeat the process if necessary. Refer to the installation manual for details. The stall force potentiometer controls the amount of force the opener will apply against an obstruction before it stops and reverses direction. This setting will need to be adjusted to compensate for the weight and size of your gates. Use a small, flat blade screwdriver to adjust the stall force sensitivity just to the point where the gates operate smoothly without obstructing from their own weight or wind conditions. For safety reasons, use the lowest setting possible to operate the gates. The factory setting for the auto close is off. You can adjust the auto close time to off or from 3 to 120 seconds. You can override the auto close setting by pressing the transmitter button to make the gates close immediately. All GTO transmitters have a standard factory setting and are ready to operate the gate opener. For security and safety, we strongly recommend replacing the factory setting with a personal setting. Open the transmitter and set the dip switches into different positions for your personal setting. Do not set all of the switches in the same position. Once the dip switches have been set, replace the cover. If you have multiple transmitters, set the dip switches the same at this time. To program the new code, press and hold the transmitter button while pressing the Learn Remote button on the control board. Continue to hold the buttons until the alarm sounds. Then release. The new transmitter code is programmed. Test the receiver range and adjust the mounting point if necessary to achieve the best reception, then permanently secure it. Attach the warning signs included with the installation package to both sides of the gate. Automatic gate openers produce high levels of force and it is your responsibility to post warnings. Be sure you explain all the safety instructions to the homeowner and leave the installation manual for future reference. It contains safety guidelines, installation information, and troubleshooting tips. Visit the GTO Access Systems website at gtoaccess.com to access online resources such as our troubleshooting wizard and information about GTO products and accessories.